Welcome to the Dear Doc Podcast, where we will discuss the business of running a dental practice with a panel of experts. Now, your host, Dr. Christopher Hoffpower. Hey guys, this is Dr. Huffpower and I'm coming to you from my home studio here in Alvin, Texas. And uh, today I have got the beautiful, talented, <laughs> and 12-year-old Kinsey Broxson. Uh, Kinsey, you know I pick on you about being so tiny all of the time and you look yeah, so okay. young. I, if I didn't look so darn old, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so jealous. So <laughs> talk to me a little bit about um, what you do. You're, you're an expert in what? And training, insurance training and um, administrative training with the front office. Okay, fantastic. So do you, do you train only front office staff members or do you train office managers, insurance coordinators, treatment plan coordinators? What, what, what all is in that front office box for you? Everybody. So um, it basically um, is a 360 view for everyone in the office. We train on treatment planning and how insurance affects your treatment plans. We cover um, the appointment coordinating position, how to communicate. It's even good for clinical staff to take as well. So they have a good understanding of insurance and kind of what the front office is doing too. And it's right. even good for the doctor um, to understand the insurance piece too. Absolutely. You know, it's one of those things. I know that I personally know more about insurance than a whole lot of doctors, but um, I, I feel so ignorant sometimes because it, it can be a confusing, uh, a confusing thing. I mean, yeah. So real quick, let's cover something. Um, how long have you been doing this and what are your qualifications? What makes you an expert? I mean, I know that you guys own a company that trains people to do this, which is super yeah. cool. And uh, that you created this company from, from scratch and you guys are doing really well with that right now. Yeah. I use it in my own office. Um, now, the, the thing I'm Really, and full disclosure, guys, by the way, I liked it so much, I actually bought a piece of the company. So, Kenzie and I are partners. Um, but we're not going to mention PK Performance anymore. If you want to know about, more about it, you can find the discounts on TBOD. But what we're really going to talk about right now is what makes you an expert that people should listen to. Because, Kenzie, I pick on you about it all the time. You look like you're five. And so, a lot of these dentists, when they, they meet you face-to-face -face for the first time, they're like, Oh my Whoa. God, you're so young, right? <laughs> yeah. I know you get that a lot. I get it all the time. I get it with patients too in the office. They're like, are you old enough to talk about this? And I'm like, I know, yes, I know a lot I of am. our, I know a lot of our young, uh, young women doctors, uh, can, and, and honestly, a lot of our young men doctors too, can, can really feel that connection there because I know it happened to me. That's why I grew this beard. Uh, I don't know if you've seen pictures of me without the beard, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I look like I'm what, 12? Young, very young. <laughs> So, no, I like to use it to my advantage too because um, I also like to challenge myself. So I feel like my age helps me challenge myself a lot because people do like to question me. So right. um, I do have to come at it with all of the information and a little bitty details. And I think that's what helps make me um, a little bit better at explaining things and helping the doctor when it comes to insurance and treatment plans and things like that. Well, um, I, I was I, I was absolutely impressed whenever I talked to you about insurance. You, you very, very quickly outstripped my knowledge. So, <laughs> uh, tell us how you got into this gig to begin with. Um, it was so, like at your sixth birthday party or something? and Kind of. Uh, <laughs> no, I've been um, in the dental industry for three years now. I started out in banking, actually. I really liked business whenever I got out of school, and so that's what I wanted to go into. Um, and then while working at a bank, the doctor that banked there, um, she really liked my customer service skills and she just offered me a job. Um, so I made the decision to leave the banking industry and pursue something else. Right. And then um, once I got hired on, I realized very quickly, cause you know, you work at a bank and you go through a lot of training and there's a lot of steps before you can even communicate with customers. Right. And I noticed right away um, whenever I got hired, there was no training at all. It was kind of like, oh, this is how dentistry works. And then here, do your job right. here, do insurance. And it was like, wait a minute, how can you trust me to do anything when you don't know what I know? Absolutely. Um, but I was very fortunate um, to have a mentor when I started and you know, Pam, you've talked to her and she's um, my partner in all of this. And she's had 20 plus years in dentistry. So instantly we formed a really good connection and she decided to mentor me and teach me everything about dentistry. 
Well, what really surprised me is um, the fact that you only had three years because in talking to you and, and you know, personally, you, you know, my office manager, Lauren, yeah. and she's been in this field for, she's been doing nothing but insurance for what, seven years now. Yeah. And you guys started talking and whenever I finished, whenever you guys finished, Lauren told me, she said, wow, that girl knows this shit. <laughs> I said, I know. That's why I brought her to meet you. Um, I, we were both so impressed that after three years, and I know a lot of people are going to hear this. And yeah. like, oh, she's been in there for three years. Yeah. But your amount of knowledge that you've managed to, to, to gather uh, with Pam as a resource and with working Goodness, what types of you've you've worked in like every type of dental office setting because you you do yeah. billing for like specialists, All specially, yeah. And so you have a really broad um, knowledge mm -hmm. base there. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of people when they hear this, they're going to say, "Well, Doc, why'd you bring this chick on? She's only been doing this for three years, <laughs> but you're just that impressive." Yeah. So I like to say too that um, you know, with being young and being in the dental industry, I do take pride in also being able to soak up a lot of knowledge. It's, I kind of act as a sponge and anything that comes at me, I just take it all in and remember it. And that's just my personality maybe. Um, but that helps too with my age. I just absorb everything <laughs> that I've been taught. Those young brains, there's not a whole lot in there. So you can put stuff in <laughs> You there. can put so much. <laughs> right. It's like an empty closet, right? You can put those right. boxes anywhere you want. You get right. old like me and you've got like boxes leaning on each other. You're trying to figure out how to get in there without the other knowledge falling out. Yeah. But, uh, so uh, talk to us about some of the most common coding errors or common mistakes that you see that a dentist can listen to this episode or this segment because these are just the meet the, meet the, doc, uh, meet the experts segments. Um, Something that one of these doctors can listen to the segment and go, I can fix that Monday. Yeah. Um, so I doctors. think one of the biggest problems that I've noticed um, just by talking to you and like hearing the feedback from some of the doctors throughout the groups is that things aren't initially being sent properly, whether it's right. the proper numbers in the right spot, like the NPIs, the um, tax ID information, that way it's getting sent to the correct office, the billing information is correct. Also, the narrative coming across because, as you saw the other day when I posted about the core buildup, certain insurance companies, they expect certain x-rays, photos, and a narrative. Um, and if you don't and have some that... Of, some of them even want photographs now. Yeah, yeah. Intro, and you can get your claims processed so fast if you have an intro camera. If you just take photos, it literally cuts down on the claims processing time. Um, so those are some of the things that I've seen come across is that maybe things initially aren't being sent properly. And then if they are and the insurance is still giving kickback, my biggest thing is come up with the solution. We all know insurance companies suck. <laughs> we know they're trying to not pay out as much as they would like. And so my solution is just come up with the clinical appeal and appeal what they're saying because it's a dentist on the other side and you're a dentist also. And so if you can just communicate with them on a clinical level and explain like, hey, this is why we're doing what we're doing, then they may understand that a little bit better than just outright getting angry about it and then not knowing what to do. Because right. really, not everybody's... To solve any problems. Right, right. And in reality, you know, everybody's trying to do good dentistry and you're just trying to help the patient. So whether they're going to try to throw out different clauses on you, if you can explain a really good reason as to why you're helping the patient, I think that helps so much. Well, in your narratives were really, honestly, they're beautifully written. I, I think that you don't do yourself justice there when you say, oh, just come up with a reason. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've posted a couple of the narratives that you've sent me because you, you have read some of our, some of our posts in the Dear Doc yeah. and you've, you've told me, hey, look, I think I can help this guy. Would you mind giving this to him? And I've yeah. actually posted those. Um, and uh, they're, they're just very eloquent. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you've got a gift of doing this. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things I'd love for you to do is to get some of your appeals you've written and some of your narratives you've written and give them to me and I'll load them up on TBOD. We can get these doctors yeah. faster. Yeah. Now the other thing is for the sure. other side of this equation is the doctor insurance expert. And you, you know who I'm talking about. We're going to be bringing in as your counterpart. Yeah. And that's yeah. Dr. Travis Campbell. Yeah. Um, and uh, you guys have gotten to kind of hang out a little bit virtually. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I know your opinions of Travis. You hold him in very high esteem. He's a, yeah. he's a sharp guy. Yeah, he uh, is. Hopefully between the two of you, we can, uh, we can get some really great answers to some of these problems and mm -hmm. help some doctors with their insurance woes. So, I think so. And I mean, honestly, 
I genuinely just want to help the doctors because when I noticed whenever I got hired on in the dental field, I was like, how can somebody go to school for so long? And the insurance just takes apart everything from what they're trying to do. And they're just trying to help the patient. Right. And it, that's just not fair. So I always stick behind. I went to school for business. I love business. Let me help take care of that part. You just help the patient and do the dentistry part and we can make a great team. Yeah. So um, real quick, uh, some things I do in my practice uh, that might help some people is um, on every single crown description in the notes, it asks for how long the crown has been there, the reason that the crown is being remade, whether or not it's replacing a, uh, a, a pre-existing restoration. Yeah. Um, it, it's got all that information. And so all of that information gets sent out every time we do a crown. But yeah. we also take, we also make sure that, a, that we have a recent bite wing within the last three months. And if we don't have one, I don't charge them. I just do the darn bite wing. Yeah, I know. We have a recent PA. I want to make sure we have an intraoral photo. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I can't remember the last time I had a crown that was, that was, that was rejected. Yeah, I mean, I have done a lot, a lot of claims processing. And I don't remember the last time I've ever had to write an appeal on a crown or had it oh. denied. Just and, because and, sending the proper information is how you can get it paid faster. And for SRPs, we always make sure we have up-to-date bite wings. We make sure we have probing depths and cowls. I think that people forget in school, they taught you to measure the mucogingival junction to the yep. CDA. And if you don't do that, you can't prove clinical attachment loss. And that is the justification right. for SRP. Um, and you've right. worked actually for periodontists. Do they have any cool tricks yeah. that I don't know about? No, not no. really. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. It really Pro is the same. Probing depths, probing yep. depths, attachment loss, and bleeding on probing. And make yep. sure you've got your bite wings because yep. it, what they're going to go off of is radiographic bone loss unless you have the cowl because the cowl yep. is specifically the diagnosis. So if you mm -hmm. don't put the cowl in there, you're giving them all the power. You want exactly. the power, right? Exactly. Exactly. And so the full mouth series. <laughs> right. Right. So what else, what else have you seen? I know there was a doctor who was um, complaining not too long ago about a, a crown that had been um, denied. Uh, due to the fact that it had bone loss. And the, the insurance company said that it was inappropriate treatment because there was bone loss around the tooth. Was that the one with the bridge? Oh, uh, it might have been. It might have been. I think the one that, that was the, the bridge where it was 29, 30, and 31. It might have been. And so, they said 29 was going to be alternate benefited to a DO amalgam, and then 30 was missing and then 31 they said that there was no fracture or anything was wrong with it so they're like there's no reason mm -hmm. to do a crown there old brain young brain <laughs> yes i think that i think that may have been one no, may, may have been the uh may have been the the specific post so how, what would you tell that doctor you know i, I know you already talked to him you already gave yeah. him a beautifully written narrative and said yeah. here just give this to the insurance company and they're gonna pay you yeah so well actually, my thought is oh, my thought is, yeah, I want to hear about the follow-up on that too. <laughs> right. My thought is if they're not going to pay for 31 because there's nothing wrong with the tooth, well, at least a cantilever bridge, at least cover 29 and 30. That way you can cover the space. And if you're going to cover a deal amalgam, then why wouldn't you just cover that tooth? And if not that, right. then at least cover the missing spot because the patient needs to have that replaced. And implant obviously is not the solution. So if a dental consultant can come up with a better solution, right. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> and, and, and full disclosure, that was the one where they had already lost several implants, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Three, three attempts were made. So you have a history of attempting other treatment and that's right. clearly not working. And I've noticed too, that if you inform the patient or the insurance company of the exact dates that you had, um, the multiple attempts and there was failure, they take that a lot better than if you just tell them, oh, we just tried well, it multiple Well, they times. don't look back at the history of the patient. They don't know what you know. They only know what you've sent them. And that's exactly. a real good point. If you send a story that has completeness, mm -hmm. it's much more likely that they're going to pay. Right. And I sent you that appeal on the two implants and that was the same thing. They initially get two implants for a patient and they're like, well, you need to do a partial. Well, right. they didn't know that he had tried a partial years ago and he has a right. horrible gag reflex. So sending that information, they're like, oh, I see the full story. It's, yeah, totally exactly. understandable. 
And I've talked to many dental consultants before on the phone, like with peer to peer reviews. And right. they've said, we don't know the whole story. Like I'm not denying it to be a horrible person. I just don't know the backstory. And if you give me the backstory, yeah, I'll process it. It's totally fine. Well, and that goes back to your don't get angry, don't get emotional um, mm -hmm. statement. And you know, if, if the doctor gets on the phone and they're upset, it might feel good to take out your, your angst on this person. But in mm -hmm. reality, they're very poorly trained. They don't yeah. know what your, what your, your insurance coordinator knows in most cases. They're people off the street. Right. And they'll even right. admit that to you whenever you talk to them. I've right. had several of them say, I, I didn't know you. Thank you for teaching me that. And I'll say, yeah. okay, look, you know, you can go over here and you can look at Charles Blair's book or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, it, they, they're grateful. In a lot of yeah. cases, that gets your claim pushed through too. It you does. Know? <laughs> it really you know? does. Being nice to people. Whoa. There's a, yeah. You know, now, if they aren't going the way you want, then you can get a little angry. <laughs> right. Start out nice, and then if it's not going the way you want, then get a little aggressive. But. All right. So, Kenzie, I'm going to give you the last minute to talk about anything having to do with um, insurance that you want to. So, go for it. Um, another thing that I kind of like to talk about with the insurance, if you have someone filing your claims for you, doing your appeals for you, it's not just about knowing how the insurance company works because everybody knows um, the employers pick out the policy or you pick out an individual policy and this is how each state works. Everybody understands that part, but the big missing piece is the person filing the claims and the appeals has to know the clinical side too. You have to know what the doctor is doing in the back to be able to find a solution on the business piece of it. For example, the bridge that I um, sent you for that appeal if I didn't know about cantilever bridges, there's no way I could have written that. Right. And if there's, if I didn't know what happens when there's a missing tooth in a, in a site, there's no way I could have written that. Um, and so that's a huge missing piece is you have to know the clinical side before you can be an expert in insurance. And, and, for the, and, and for the the dentist out there who are going, ah, oh, cantilever bridge, because we don't like those, right? <laughs> yeah. But what, what she's asking is for an alternative benefit. That right. doesn't mean that the dentist is going to do a cantilever bridge. It means they're going to get paid for one and the patient will have to come out of pocket for the abutment, uh, for the, for the abutment to that bridge that is mm -hmm. not covered in a cantilever. Just right. so you guys know. And when you send that off, you code what, what you did. Mm -hmm. You don't code what you're getting paid. Yep. So, well, let them, let them change the code. The insurance exactly. Company. Exactly. Because that's legal. It's not yeah. legal for you as the dentist to do it. Because right. That's fraud. Right. And that's why in any of those, whenever you try to always request an alternate, a better alternate benefit, like give me a one-time exception. Can you accept a better solution? Can you alternate benefit to this instead of the lower option um, and give them a reason why? So that is something that I think is a really big missing piece. I've noticed that you use that term a lot. It must be a very successful one for you. Give me a one-time exception. Oh. Yeah. I've heard you say it now about 30 times. Yeah. So yeah, just a one-time courtesy, a one-time exception. And they usually they're like, okay, one time, but I mean, now you can't use that all the time. <laughs> Not for every single insurance company. Right. Just one but, time again. Yeah. Well, just one more time. <laughs> but surely after a while, once you start sending the proper information initially, you're not having to do so many appeals. Right. Um, and so that's, I think that's a huge missing piece. And then, just one last thing that I'd like to talk about is with me being so young, I do want people to know that the person that did mentor me had a lot of experience. She worked as a dental assistant first, then she was an instructor at the college, then she was the program director for the ADA accredited dental assisting program, then she worked for Cigna, she was in complex claims and appeals, she was a claim and that's, reviewer. <laughs> that's the thing that you, you never mentioned until last, and I really think you should put first. She was the person who was working for the insurance companies to deny your claims. Yes. She knows all the tricks. Yes. She taught them all to Kinsey. Yep. And she was a dental trainer um, for the customer service department and the reps and the claims department. So she's got a very wide spectrum of knowledge Absolutely. And that's what she has handed down to me. And she's still assisting with me on that. And so right. that's something that I do want people to know out there is I am young, but, you know, I like to stick behind knowledge is powerful. Um, as long as you know what you're doing and you have the information, whether it's somebody writing the appeal that's 
30, 40, 50 years old or 20 year old, as long as the person's getting the job done and as long as the information's correct, what's it matter? Absolutely. All right, Kenzing, thank you for coming on to the show today and I uh, look forward to doing some Dear Doc letters with you. Yes. Folks, um, thank you for joining us and uh, wasting yet another half hour of your life listening <laughs> to the sound of my voice. So we'll thank see you again soon. Bye. Yes, guys. thanks. Thanks for listening to the Dear Doc Podcast, your source for the business and legal questions associated with your dental practice. Don't forget to subscribe to the Dear Doc Podcast on all major platforms. <laughs>